Hello everyone, I'm bringing a video today looking at this battle dress blouse. Now we hadn't had a video looking at battle dress for a little while and this is a, just a particularly nice example of a 1940 pattern battle dress blouse, British made 1940 pattern battle dress blouse. This particular example dating from 1942. There's no date on the label but there is a War Department ink stamp inside which includes the letter O which is the date code for 1942. We'll see that when we turn this inside out and have a look at the interior details. I would note there is insignia on this as home guard insignia, which is not original to the blouse. It's something I fitted for an event several years ago. The shoulder titles are original, but sewn onto this blouse by me. And the regional insignia is reproduction and won't pay too much mind to that. And we're mainly just looking at the blouse here, having a look at the various details. As I say, this is just a quite a nice example of a 1940 pattern blouse. You can see the various features of the 1940 pattern here. It differed in the details from Battle Dress Surge, um, having a lined collar, slightly different positioning of the pocket, slight changes to the cut and so forth, but it is otherwise very similar. Of course, introduced a slightly more complex design of buckle down here as well. The design still has concealed buttons, as you can see, still has the pleated pockets. We've not yet reached the utility point in terms of design of Battle Dress blouse. Obviously, the utility blouse would be far more uh, simplified, far, there'd be a far greater simplification of the design and economization on materials making uh, these la the later patterns of uh, battle dress blouse. This still has many of the early features which have been introduced with battle dress surge with just minor changes to the design. You can see the distinctive shape of the collar coming around here, obviously held in place with two hooks and eyes there. You then have the row of concealed buttons down the front and it fastens around the waist with the uh, waist strap and buckle here, the waistband, and then blouse is over, hence it being a battle dress blouse. You have the two chest pockets here, which as mentioned have the pleats to these, and obviously a concealed button under the flap here, which buttons through a piece of the drill lining stitched in there, as you can see, and the pocket flaps are lined with khaki drill underneath both of those there, as you can see, as is the collar, which is a, another point, as mentioned before, that differentiates this from the preceding battle dress surge design. Otherwise, very typical of battle dress uniform in the overall layout and so forth. Epaulets up on the shoulders here, which we'll see as we move this round. Even the cuff buttons are concealed on this particular design, and we'll see that again as we move this round and have a look at the various other details. And we will, of course, turn this inside out, have a look at the stamp inside and the label as well. Looking at the right-hand side of this, we obviously have the insignia on the arm here. Don't pay too much mind to that. That's something I've added, as I say. We have the epaulette up on the shoulder here, and this is secured with a vegetable ivory button here with a metal shank in the center, which you can see here. So I remember these are quite tight, so I will unbutton this, but just bear with me. The buttonholes are quite tight for the buttons here. You can see the metal shank there, just sewn onto the, the shoulder. Button that back down. Moving down the arm, you can see that distinctive feature of battle dress, with the arm being curved forward to give extra freedom of movement when bringing a rifle up to the shoulder. And then we have a concealed button cuff here, no gusset or anything there, just a simple open cuff. And if we unbutton this, you can see the lining there and then the buttonhole for the button to button through and remain concealed. So feature carried across from Battle Dress Surge, having all the concealed buttons on this. So that's the cuff there. If we lift the arm out of the way, we can see round on the waistband here, the belt coming round, or extension to the waistband round here, using the more complex buckle that was used with the 1940 pattern uniform and carried through onto the utility pattern here. This has a slide and teeth to help grip the waistband there. Sort of a belt loop sewn on there to keep the loose end of this away there, tucked away. And obviously this draws the waist in and allows for that blousing of the blouse over the waistband. Uh, interesting feature of the design. Of course, that's what makes this a blouse. Looking at the back here, you can see the seams running down the back of the arms. You can see the central seam running down the back here. If we turn the collar up here, you can see the stitching, the detail of the stitching underneath the collar there. We'll see more detail of that when we turn this inside out, of course. And you can see the waistband stitched on around here. Of course, there are buttonholes, concealed buttonholes under here, which again, we'll see when we turn this inside out. And these allow for the blouse to be buttoned onto the trousers, essentially making one suit and stops this riding up when that's done. And we'll have a look at that, as I say, when we turn this inside out. Looking at the left-hand side here, there's not a huge amount more to talk about. You just obviously have the waistband coming around here to form that belt, which then buckles round to the right. So around the side here, the waistband is just pretty plain, as you can see. With this turned inside out now, you can see the layout of the internal pockets. We have two breast pockets here, as you can see, one on each side. 
These aren't bags for the outside pockets. The outside pockets are patch pockets with the pleats. You have these two internal pockets here as well. You can see the lining all the way down the front here where the buttons attach and the same on the other side. And the waist belt is, the waistband is also lined there as you can see, as are the cuffs as you can see there. We have both the label and also the War Department ink stamp here. And we'll get a close up of both of these now. You can see the designation here of battle dress, blouse, 1940 pattern, size number 10, which is my size, five foot nine to five foot 10, breast 36 to 37 inches, waist 31 to 32 inches, and you have the manufacturer here, Jackson the tailor, and the government arrow beneath that. Looking at the ink stamp, you can see here the letter O, followed by WD, and then the number beneath that, the inspection stamp, O being the letter code for 1942. Another thing to mention here, looking at the front, is you can see more detail of the stitching on the collar here with this turned inside out. There is also the drill lining there for the collar. When we turn this up, you can see the hooks and eyes here where the collar closes. A little bit of rust bleeding through from those, unfortunately. You also have a section of drill reinforcement on the shoulder here where the button sews through for the epaulettes as well. We'll start moving this around now and have a look at some of the other details. Looking at the right hand side here, you can see the details of the construction, the internal construction here. You see details of the cuff here with the concealed button, obviously the brass button there to close that and the lining all the way around. You can see a little bit of the thread here from where the insignia is attached. This section of white thread here has nothing to do with me and I hadn't noticed that previously, so I might remove that. It's been tied off to the inside here, possibly from insignia being attached in the past, but I'm not sure about that. You see the details of the various seams, the construction there, and obviously the lining of the collar coming around there, and perhaps a better view of the drill reinforcement up on the shoulder where the epaulette button attaches there as well. We'll take a look at the back of this now. We're not going to look at the other side. There's really not that much more to see. But we'll have a look at the back of this here. You can see that central seam coming down here. You can see the rear seam on the arm, shoulder seams there, details of the construction. And then at the waistband here, you can see, see the concealed buttonholes I mentioned previously. You can see we have one here, one there, and one round on the other side on this section of drill stitched into the waistband on top of the drill lining material. And this allows for the blouse to be buttoned onto the three corresponding buttons on the trousers, as mentioned previously, which connects the two together and stops the back of the blouse riding up. That's the idea of having the two pieces of clothing buttoned together in this way. And as with all the other buttonholes on this uh, blouse, these allow for the buttons to be buttoned through and remain concealed so they don't snag on things and so forth. You know, the buttonholes round on the waistband there. So I hope you found it interesting looking at this. As I say, we hadn't covered battle dress on the channel for a little while. And I remember I had this in the collection and I haven't worn it for a little while. I tend to try and wear original uniforms fairly sparingly. As I say, I did wear this for an event a few years ago, um, representing a member of the Home Guard, which was a very good event as I remember. Uh, hence the insignia added onto this, tacked on. And as I say, it was just nice to dig this out and make a video talking about it. And I do hope you found it interesting as well. If you have found this interesting and you'd like to see more of this sort of thing, please do consider subscribing to the channel if you haven't already. And whether you're newly subscribing or you've previously subscribed, please do make sure you hit the little bell, the notification button down below. And that will, of course, alert you when I upload future videos. If you really like my uploads and you would like to support the channel, you can. Both Patreon and PayPal are linked down below. And a huge thank you to everybody who supports the channel using those two methods. It really is greatly appreciated, as I always say. Thank you all very much indeed. If you'd like to follow the channel on social media, you can. Facebook, Instagram, and Twitter are all linked down below. And if you'd like to get in touch, but you don't really use social media, there is, of course, an email address down there as well. That's everything for this video. So until next time, bye for now.